Well, YouTube, here we are in the uh, the new wick shop. Uh, been pretty busy here the last couple days. I haven't really documented any of it because it's mostly just me doing carpentry work. Uh, I know I didn't get a really good view of it before, but there was some kind of retarded shelving on the walls over here. And uh, all of that has since come off because, I mean, it, it gave us, you know, so much room, so much more room in here um, along this wall. The basic idea is going to be that this this bay right here will be kind of the work bay and um, this bay here you know the automotive work bay and this bay here will uh, actually be kind of the just general work bay. I'll be able to put some motors on stands along that wall and uh, just some things like that. Uh, yeah, I went down and bought some wood and I used a lot of that wood that uh, was over on that wall for um, shelving and for building new stuff and then a lot of the wood that came off of this bench. This bench used to extend, I don't know, like I said, I don't remember in the video, it used to extend clear out to like where that uh, boring bar is right there, which yes, by the way, uh, I scored a boring bar here along the way, a uh, really nice one. Um, Used, of course, but in very good shape. Comes with some good, good uh, um, bits and tooling. Um, yeah, so we're kind of getting moved in, and then there was some retarded shelving over on this wall that didn't really make much good use of the space. And so uh, I don't remember. I don't know if you guys would remember the old shop. Well, of course you probably remember the old shop if you've been watching my videos for a while. But uh, <coughs> we didn't have a Say what? Um, yeah, go ahead. Kayla's out here. Uh, we didn't have a toolbox per se. What we had was that roll around tool rack with the toolbox on the top for all the things that you couldn't hang. So I'm kind of going to that same theme here. What I did is I'm trying to save as much space as possible so I got all the width that I need. And um, I've got a phone call. So I wanted to save as much space as possible. And uh, so what I'm going to do instead of a toolbox is a tool rack, which will be all on this piece of plywood, which I've put uh, braces in behind so I'm not screwing into the drywall. And then uh, the corner shelf for all of the things that I can't hang, you know, the drills and air tools, etc., etc. Um, the refrigerator came out of that corner and uh, obviously is over there. And my air compressor, when I finally get it, will go over here. I'm going to get a stand up stationary that's capable, a little bit more capable than the old compressor in the old shop of uh, doing some painting and sanding and some things like that, a little bit more air intensive stuff. Um, Let's see. So I built my bookshelf. I just finished up with my bookshelf and I don't have all my books on it, but I've still got to go get those from our rental garage. Uh, yet a lot of our stuff got packed up into uh, our rental property. And so we're still in the process. That's just a short drive across town. Maybe you'll get to see it someday. I don't know. But uh, anyways, um, add a girl. Hold it proudly. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I'm getting in a lot better spirits. It's nice to see the garage starting to come around, and it's nice to be able to spend some time in here. I actually spent some money here, as much as it hurt. I spent $100 at the pawn shop on this nifty little chop saw, the little Delta Home Series, well, Shopmaster Series. Not real old, but not super new, but it didn't look like it had hardly ever been used. Um, still had the original blade in it, and it looked like they'd been cutting some plastic. I mean, there's, there wasn't even any scratches or anything on the deck. And it rotates and does all that funny stuff, but way cheaper than a brand new one. Um, and it's a 12-inch blade, but uh, I had to pay 100 bucks for that. You see, I got the uh, 390 in here. This is from the 61 that everybody had asked about. The 61 went by the wayside. Unfortunately, in the process of the move, there was a lot of things that we just had to kind of cut our losses with and say goodbye to. Um, it just either couldn't be stored, didn't make sense to haul it out. There's just too much stuff. So anyways, uh, I did, the pickup went by the wayside, but I did manage to save the, uh, that, the hot 390 I built and the C6 tranny that was in it. 
with the fixed yoke, which is awesome. Um, I'll be just kind of cleaning up in here along the way and trying to get things done. Oh, one thing I'm particularly proud of, one of the things I hated in the old shop was how there was always an oil mess underneath the funnels and the oil cans and whatnot, and I, I just hated that. I couldn't stand the mess, and it didn't seem to matter how many buckets you put under there for drip buckets, you just never could catch it all. So I went downtown and I bought myself a uh, Tupperware, as you can see, and uh, Phil and I last night built this nice little rack that, uh, so what I'll do is I'll take some expanded metal and screw down to the base of that, and um, then I can put all of my funnels and stuff on top, and this will catch all of the oil, or should catch all the oil, if the theory is sound. The only thing I may have to do for weight and whatnot is put a brace from here to the bottom of the window and so it holds it up, but it's, it's pretty damn solid, other than this one corner over here because we couldn't catch a stud, so, um, and I should have used mollies or something, but anyways, I didn't. Say what? Yeah, but when you put legs like on the floor, see, it makes it hard to sweep around, and then you get little dirty spots in your floor. And I, oh yeah, I could also, I suppose, put legs down that way. But see, if I put legs up this way, then what I'll be able to do is, is uh, I can bring a board across here uh, with an upright, and then I can drill holes or cut holes in some wood and have spots for some different funnels to hang there instead of just setting them on the grate and letting them drip all over everything. So anyways, you can kind of see the shop coming together, um, starting to get stuff put up. I can finally put up my road signs and all, all that old college stuff, you know, fun things. And Phil gave me some presents, that nice Bud Light mirror. I'm really fond of that since Bud Light's my drink of choice. And the Budweiser clock, which I think is absolutely cool. It's the old vintage, you know, Anheuser-Busch stuff, and it's got the, obviously, you can see it. I don't have to explain it. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, oh, and uh, another thing I'm particularly proud of is my little shelf I built for my TV and my entertainment center. You know, it's not a huge shop. It's probably not as big square footage-wise as the last one, but, you know, I, and I might be surprised on that, too. But, uh, but it's... So we're trying to save as much space as possible. The nice thing about it is we don't have that tiny little hallway where we pull vehicles in, you know, and you got to edge along them, you know, you're like, you're like, oop, 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 trying to squeeze between them. I hated that. But, uh, oh, let's see. That's about that, you know. Um, obviously, you can see an old familiar friend in here. Uh, it's in here for warranty work. But I will explain that in a whole nother video. Oh, one thing that got left behind just because it was completely overlooked was, uh, was the old dartboard, my old shop sobriety test. So I actually spent quite a bit of money when I went down to the, to the pawn shop. I spent almost 200 bucks. But I got myself a nifty little dartboard there for $15. And right above it, I got myself a really nice tin marble sign, and I got it for like 20 bucks, and it's in really good shape. Tin, it's plastic. No, it's definitely metal. Yeah, it's metal. But uh, anyways, I, I just thought that was cool. I saw it, and I asked the lady, I said, well, you know, what would you take for it? And, and she says, well, I don't know. I'd probably have to have $25, and she'd already come down a few quite a bit and so I said well give it give it to me for 20 and I had the chop saw sitting on the table and so we bought the chop saw and the marble sign together for $120 and then the tools that we'd gotten in there and gotten before but uh, I am babbling as usual so I guess now that's my first tour of the uncompleted shop but uh, yeah I'm I'm really starting to kind of like it. Got to get all the rest of my tools in here and everything kind of set up and start getting my tool board put together. And and uh, then we got some projects on the way, obviously. Oh, in other news, good news, um, we have found a good motor for the brown cow, which is sitting dead out at Phil's place, as you saw if you watched the video. Um, and that will be uh, next in here after Denny's Jeep is finished. So, until another video, we'll see you guys later.